Hello everyone, Simicraft here, and welcome to a new weekend series. Today we are playing I Was a Teenage Exocolonist, which, uh, I'll be honest, I just kind of stumbled upon on the Steam store front, and it was, I'll be, uh, looking at it, the Steam store page, honestly, look, it reminded me quite a bit of growing up, so, uh, here's the episode title, are we going, we're going to play Growing Up in Space. Maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, it's like growing up, visually speaking, combined with the uh, titling sensibilities of a Japanese light novel. Um, so yeah, apparently there's also content warnings, so I guess I might as well show you what those are. Uh, major character deaths, children in peril slash dying, animal cruelty and death, body horror, implied sexual content, drugs and alcohol, violence and text, mental health and trauma, domestic abuse, and traumatic global events all could potentially happen. Um, so, if that's not your jam, then... Uh, Get out of here for everyone else. Let's enjoy a nice, fun little Exo Colony space game. Yeah. Wake up. Uh oh, that's a choice. Warning this game deals with mature subjects and may not be suitable for all players. Please see our content warnings in the system menu for a detailed list of themes and events. <laughs> Nothing rattles me, I'm fine. You wake to chaos, a confusion of light and heat and smoke. Fire! Your head is pounding. You must have hit it and blacked out, but you aren't sure how you got here, or what on Vertumna, Vertumna is happening. There's something important you need to remember. This is an interesting way to present to this starting bit. Your stomach lurches as the floor crumbles beneath your feet, then collapses. Your body aches, and your eyes burn from the smoke. A figure through the flames. It's your friend! Your friend? Wait, why can't you remember her name? She's gesturing and shouting at you, but all you hear is ringing in your ears. Uh, I think this is a climb out sort of situation. You know, shoot first, ask questions later. You try to stand up, but one of your legs folds uselessly underneath you. It won't hold your weight. Your friend pulls you out of the rubble. She throws your arm over her shoulder and half drags you towards the door. Through it, you see a deep, eerie twilight, dark blue and cold against the heat of the fire around you. Glow season. Glowing eyes, you shake your head to clear your vision. Is that some kind of dog, like from Earth? Oh my, that's no dog. The creature howls and lunges, its jaws open. Well, that was a short life. I think I want a refund now. I was a teenage exocolonist. Which I guess would be a colonist of exoplanets. Exoplanets, of course, being planets outside the solar system. I have to say, the visual presentation so far is very distinctive. You are born on the st stratospheric Earth's... Oh, that's the name of the ship. You are born on the stratospheric Earth's first colony ship, halfway through its 20-year voyage to a wormhole at the edge of the solar system. Your parents run the hydroponic gardens, which make fresh air and vegetables for the ship. Like the other colonists, they bravely chose to make this one-way journey to the uncharted planet, Vertumna. 4. In hopes they could escape Earth's troubles. They had you the old fashioned way. Merging their genes like they merged their cultures and traditions. They name you. Alright, so we've got Solencia. So 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 Solana. Solin. Or something else. Uh. I don't know. These names are all a bit weird. I think Solana is the name I could get used to the most easily. Solana. You're a bright-eyed child with an active imagination. Sometimes too active, your mom says. Use the sliders on the left to choose pronouns and late teen appearance. These can be changed at any time. Uh... What? 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 This doesn't seem... I guess 
I mean, Salon, I guess, is a female-sounding name, so we'll, we'll go with that. There you go. Uh, you, you have vivid dreams of things you've never experienced. Dirt under your feet, skies overhead, endless jungles, and strange animals. You wonder if this is what Vertumna will be like. Probably not. Who knows? Every child on the stratospheric is given one genetic enhancement. By age six, you see the first signs of yours. Okay, eagle eyes, extra fingers? I'm sure there's a circumstance where that would be useful. I, you, you'd probably be a great pianist. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it seems like a niche skill. Absorbent brain? What? Like, like you're, like you're, like a sponge? Am I misinterpreting this? Okay, super strength, that's, you know, uh, that's pretty straightforward. Calm temperament, or nothing at all. Huh. Calm temperament would be an interesting, uh, sort of, uh, what, 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 genetic enhancements? Yeah, I like that. Oh, Solana, a very calm, level-headed individual. Calm temperament. There we go. Minus one stress. Perfect. Nothing can phase you. You're rarely frustrated, and you don't let anxiety get the better of you. You brush insults aside, always play nice, and never have to be told that sharing is caring. You're especially nice to your friend. Energetic and loyal. Anemone. Tough and gentle cow. Bold and confident Mars. I see what you did there. Quiet and adventurous... I don't even know how to pr Yes? Yes? I, I don't know. Studious and mature. Tangent? Huh. Shy and sweet Tammy. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, you're nice. Wh who's our friend here? Let's see. Uh, definitely not someone who I don't know how to pronounce the name. Sorry. That would be embarrassing to have to bring that up all too often, given that I don't know how to pronounce the name. Maybe I could look it up, but I'm a YouTuber, let's play, right? Not some sort of researcher or anything. Um, Bold and Confident Mars could be interesting. Shine Sweet Tammy? Hmm. Who, who would mesh well with this calm personality of... I, I forgot our character's name already, like Sol Solana? Solana? Uh, we'll go with bold and confident Mars. We're calm. Th th this person's confident. Sounds great. Anyways, Mars is a natural leader. Whenever you're all playing together, Mars is the one who comes up with all the ideas. She can be a little bossy, but that's part of her charm. She always organizes fun stuff for kids after class. You're both founding members of the Secret Fun Times Club. Okay. Oh, wait, we can get a... Hold on. I guess this presumably means we can get, like, a little biography from everyone. So let's, let's, let's look at all of our options. Anemone. Anemone is the most enthusiastic person you know. Your favorite memory is the time she taught you how to play zero-G sports ball after class. She never means to get you into trouble, but somehow you always seem to find it together. Tough and gentle Cal. Cal is a sweetheart, always ready to lend a hand or play a game. He and Tammy are just as inseparable, so it's almost like you two best, like you have two best friends instead of just one. Kyle teaches you how to take care of all the classroom plants. Your parents are very proud of you both. Okay. And then Dius, unlike his serious, studious twin sister, Tangent, Dius is the kind of boy who sits in the back of the classroom and doodles on his holopom. You bond over cracking jokes about the weird diagrams in your textbooks. His quiet nature and his morbid curiosity make him somewhat of a loner. But at least he has a friend in you. Okay. Uh, studious and mature Tangent. Oh, she's she looks cool. Tangent is the kind of girl who sits right up front by the hollow projector and always has her hand in the air. She and her twin brother, Dis, drifted apart when she started genome treatment to make her body conform to her gender. Years later, Tang is the girl you always knew she was, but her relationship with Dis is worse than you than ever. Luckily, she has a friend in you. 
Oh, to resort for tangent, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, and then we got shy and sweet Tammy. Tammy is the kindest person you know. She idolizes Auntie Sedent and is always following her around, helping her with the babies or learning how to cook. She has the best snacks at class, recess, and always shares, especially with you and Cal. She and Cal are just so uh, just as close, so it's kind of like having two best friends. Interesting. I'll be honest. After looking at all the biographies, I think we'll we'll stick with our first uh, our first impression. We'll we'll go with Mars. Our first instinct. I don't know what minus one kudos means, but sure. You're ten years old when the ship finally reaches the wormhole. Professor Hall says it's like a doorway to other star systems, with the planet Vertumna Four on the other side. You run emergency drills for months to prepare. Okay. When the day finally comes, it starts with a rumble. Then things start to slide off the tables. You hurry to gather near the escape pods, just in case. The emergency area is crowded with families. It's going to be fine, Solana, your dad soothes. We'll be through the wormhole and down on the planet before you know it. Just like we've practiced. Your mom gives him a sharp, worried look. Someone's gonna die. Red emergency lights switch on as a siren begins to sound, somewhere distant in the ship. You try to breathe slowly like you were taught, but you're very scared. You look out a portal. The stars are gone. When you're frightened, you... Apparently I don't need... I don't put it on a tough face because I don't need... I don't have five toughness. Get in touch with your emotions or find a distraction. Uh... Hmm... Okay, naturally calm. Do you find a distraction or get in touch with your emotions? It's, it's important to have a understanding of your kind of inner life, I'd say, in these sorts of scenarios, right? I mean, a distraction is just that. Like You, you want to be in tune with yourself and re realize how this is affecting you and what it is that you ought to be doing to, you know, increase your chances at uh, getting out of it the other side, you know, in one piece. Okay, I wasn't quite expecting this, but okay. You ball like a baby. It feels good. You aren't the only one. Nearby, your classmate Tammy has tears streaming down her cheeks. Mars is trying quietly to console her. She sighs as your crying makes Tammy wail even more loudly. Your dad puts his arms around you as you let her out. I thought I was supposed to be, like, genetically engineered to be calm. Grats. You wait. The shaking builds. Then everything starts to get very weird. The hallway stretches, stretches, and you're stretching too. Your arm's impossibly long. Your head feels like it's slowly filling up like a balloon and contract contracting down to the size of an atom at the same time. Is this the wormhole? You hear the distinct ominous squeal of metal giving way as the ship shudders and lurches in slow motion. The weirdest part is a sense of deja vu. You're sure this has happened to you before, and you know somehow that everything is going to be okay. The shuddering reaches a crescendo. You hear an impossibly loud crunch and feel weightless for a few seconds before gravity slams you back against... Yeah, you back against the wall headfirst. You black out. As you slip unconscious, you feel yourself twisted out of time. It's today, yesterday, and tomorrow all at once. And more than just one tomorrow. Lots of them. Different tomorrows. You find yourself in a place that you know from your dreams. Tilled fields, dramatic ridges, and a stranger. But also, not a stranger. Grinning as she grabs your hand. Hurry up, she says. I'm not going to let you miss this. Distantly, you can feel the ship's shaking has stopped and hear your parents' worried voices. Feeling safe, you slip further into the warm embrace of the stars. You drift. Gradually, your consciousness reforms. You wake up in the med bay. The, me the med bed under you plays a soft tone, and an automated voice speaks. Two weeks have elapsed. The patient's cranial injury has completely has completed healing. They may now be safely discharged. As the fog lifts from your head, you realize something seems different about this room. 
It's so... bright. You try to focus on the window. Something is definitely different. S -s Sunlight? Instead of the familiar blackness of space, bright light from twin blue and yellow suns is streaming through the windows. You peer out and see fields, gla glass-walled domes, and walls ringed by giant mushroom-like trees. There are construction materials everywhere and people walking around outside on the ground? You better get out there and join them! You rush outside to start your new life or cautiously step outside to your new life? I think Solana seems like the type of character who would cautiously step outside to a new life. Okay. What have we here? Ooh. Oh, Tammy! Oh, Tammy jumps as you step out of the ship's quarters behind her. You're awake! Are you all better? You better go see your dad. She points southeast towards some geodesic, geodesic domes. Okay. To walk, click on the ground. Click on characters to talk to them. Gotcha. Oh yeah, it's like a point and click sort of deal. Or we can use the WASD. Oop. Well then. What have we going on here? Engineering. A low throbbing noise comes from the engine room, which provides power to the colony. Other corridors lead off to the teaching labs in Medbay. You know the route to your classroom well, but the rest of this wing is off limits to children. Congruence, the ship's onboard AI, beams down at you from a nearby hollow screen. Don't forget to study hard, Solana. Okay. Neat. Ooh. What's this, like a barracks or something? The garrison, a small team led by security chief Rhett, was enough to keep the peace on the stratospheric. To stay busy, they also ran the exercise gym and sports ball courts. Here on Vertumna, the garrison has expanded fast. They're building a huge wall around the colony and have an outdoor firing range and a big covered dojo. And best of all, a regulation-sized sports ball court. Okay. But who... Oh, is this the sports ball court? Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Hello. Solana. Your dad gives you a big, warm hug. I'm so happy you're finally awake. Dr. Instance thought it'd be best to keep you asleep while your noggin kneeled. Your mother and I thought you might sleep away the whole year. My snoozy little gooseberry. He checks your head and looks relieved. He was clearly very worried about you, but covers it with jokes and smiles. Aw, thanks, Dad, for being so concerned about me. Welcome to Vertumna, he says, gesturing around you. You've never seen the stratospheric from the outside except in pictures. The ship has been separated in two, and parts taken off to form other buildings and a big wall around the whole colony. The alien jungle creeps right up to the wall. Only the geodesic greenhouse pass outside, or greenhouses rather, pass outside, just dotting their way up the hill. How did you do this so fast? Yeah, this is my, my thoughts as well. You've been asleep for weeks, my dear Aubergine, he says, and these geodesic greenhouses practically put themselves up. But some of this is only a quick temporary solution, he admits. We'll keep growing and improving things once one day our little colony will be as big as a whole city. Oh, but before I forget, he pulls a package out from his satchel and hands it to you. You blink and stare at it blankly. Don't you know what day it is? He asks. What is it for my birthday? You honestly don't. You remind him that you've been asleep in Medbay. Happy birthday! He shouts, wrapping you in a warm hug. Your birthday already? You feel a dizzying sense of deja vu. You stare hard at the wrapped package. You know exactly what is in there. You remember it. No, you, you dreamed about this package some years ago on the ship. Inside will be a small medallion in the shape of a sun that your dad made by hand. And we don't need to, we don't need to, you know, ruin the surprise of saying, oh, dad, I know it's in there. I was reading through your emails. I saw the Amazon, you know, order confirmation receipts. So, uh, 
Yeah. I'll just open it. Uh, how did you know this? It's exactly as you imagined, as you dreamed. A feeling of panic rises in your throat. Your hand shakes, but how? Yeah, probably some sort of weird side effect of the wormhole. Plus one to challenges, though. Whatever that means. I feel like we still have no idea how this game actually mechanically works, but that's okay. Your dad notices. Are you okay, Solana? He snaps his fingers. Dr. Instance shouldn't have let you out so early. Sometimes those sleeping meds take a while to wear off. They might make your head feel funny for a few hours. You nod. Maybe that's all it is. Someone shouts your dad's name. Listen, I'm so sorry, Solana, he says, but I have to get back to work. There's an accident when we landed and... He stops himself. Don't worry. We're going to fix it. Your mother and I. Professor Hall is expecting you in classes, if you're feeling up to it. Your dad says, pointing west to the engineering wing in the rear end of the bisected ship. Then he points to the large door as you came out of earlier. Or you can relax in our quarters until you're feeling better. We'll talk later tonight, he says, then kisses the top of your head and ruffles your hair. Have a wonderful birthday, Solana. I love you. Okay, we can study humanities and engineering. Well, I love you too, Dad. Why not? Tetra buildings click on the door. Yeah, I know. Uh, get or get close and press enter. There, then choose activity for the month to gain skills and advance time. There are 13 months a year, and 10 years to the end of the game. You'll only have time to focus on a few things. Okay, so I'm like 10ish, so we go to about 20ish. Okay, I think I'm 10ish. All right. Uh, I guess we'll... Oh, hey, my friend. You see... Yis? Sitting on the ground beside some bushes. Is he hiding from somebody? He seems to be watching the gate and the wall to the south, where grown-ups are coming and going. Kids aren't allowed past the walls, he says quietly, without looking up. They say there's nothing to be afraid of. But then, why do we need walls? You know, sometimes it can just be a precaution. You stare at the gates, have a sudden rush of memory, so strong that you think you might faint. You imagine something crashing through the wall, something enormous, dark, and wriggly. For years in space, you've had half-remembered nightmares of monsters, of your ship being destroyed, of sifting through wreckage that used to be your home, trying to find something. Your dad always told you the dreams weren't real. Breaking you from your daydream, Jis whispers, I think there are monsters out there. Don't worry, the adults will keep us safe, right? Maybe, Jis mumbles. He doesn't look convinced. He looks down at his feet. If you believe everything they say, I guess you should go to school now, like a good girl. You shake the vision from your head. It was just a dream. This must have made you imagine it with his creepy talk. Why does he always have to be like this? You know, th thanks for, uh, you know, being all creepy and scary, yes. There you go. Hiya, Solana! Anemone says, seems really at home here. She is rolling a sports ball around with her foot, making patterns in the weird blue snow. This stuff is different from snow on Earth, she tells you. Because it isn't cold. But it's still neat, and you can make stuff out of it. How old are- how, how long have we been on this mission? I'm surprised you remember Earth. Your foggy head clears a little. Anemone is simple. Physical. Real. You always feel grounded near her. What are you making? Just snow spirals, she says. But early me and Cal made a- Big snow pal. You missed it while you were sleeping in Med Bay. She smiles her broad gap toothed smile at you. Now that you're awake, we can play. Why are you in school? She smacks her forward. School! I wondered where everybody was. I guess I'm gonna be late for humanities class. She doesn't look very worried to you. It's okay, she says. Professor Hall is chill. He won't mind, but we should probably go now. She grins and starts running towards engineering. Hey, Racia! 
No fair! She's getting a head start. Well, we will win regardless. Huzzah. Engineering. A low throbbing noise comes from the engine room, which provides power to the colony. Other quarters lead off... Oh, wait, we, we already know this. Don't forget to study hard, Solana. Uh, we could study life sciences or humanities. Plus two creativity, plus two persuasion, plus one friendship with tangent, plus 15 stress. Or this would be plus two biology, plus one reasoning, plus one friendship with tangent, plus 15 stress. Uh, I guess we'll study the humanities. That sort of area seems to be our specialty, specializing specialty right now. Welcome, Solana. Professor Hal greets you. I hope you're all warmed up and ready to study the glorious humanities. History, literature, language, media, and philosophy. And yes, if you're lucky, we'll have a little ancient earth poetry too. He seems excited about that last bit. By the way, if anyone is interested in taking engineering classes, please register through Congruence's scheduling system when you have a chance. She'll be helping me teach them. Today's assignment is an easy one, Hal says with a yawn. Because I was up late repairing congruences. Subterminal. And I could use an app. I'd like you to write an essay on what Vertumna Colony means to you. Um. Freedom, equality, democracy. My friends are all here. I feel safe here. Or just doodle instead of writing. I mean, we just kind of woke up. I'm not sure I've got a super deep philosophical, ideological opinion on the matter, but like, I guess my friends are here. That's that's pretty cool. You write about all your buds and the fun things you do together. When Hall wakes from his nap, he asks a few students to read their essays to the class. Mars likes yours because you mentioned her in it. All right, early quiet. What? When you work or go to class, you'll play a quick card challenge as the month passes. Move cards to fill the five panes and make the best hand you can. The order matters. If your total in the circle on the right reaches the goal value, you win. Depending on your cards, some challenges can't be won, but you still get a reward for doing your best. Bonus for flushes, same color together. Okay. Bonus for pairs, same number together. Aha. Uh -huh. Bonus for straights, increasing from left to right. It's like poker. The more cards in a flush, pair, or straight, the higher the bonus added to your total. Cards can also affect each other and can be rearranged to find the best total score. Okay. So... What can I, I guess we don't really have much to do with regards to. Uh, so we need to get a goal of seven. Okay, I guess here's what we do. We go discovering here, right? First words over here. First words over here. That gives us a nice little pair thing going on. But then we also get some like flushes on either side. And we're up at 11. We won. Victorious, you worked well this month. Plus one creativity. Your skills increase when you work or go to school. With extra skills if you win the challenge, and a kudos bonus if you make the highest scoring hand with your cards. Oh, I got a kudos, yay. Working also increases stress, which prevents you from working. If it reaches 100, to relieve stress, take a month off to relax in the quarters ring. Gotcha. Okay. Your parents have been working from first dawn to well after dinner every day. You know growing food is an important job, and it's vital to get crops in the ground right away. But there seems to be something more than that. It's such a change from growing up on the stratospheric when you saw them all the time. You stay up and wait for them at night before going to bed, though you can tell they're exhausted. They make an effort to spend time with you. I'm sorry we haven't seen much of you, little gooseberry, your dad says. Your mom watches you as she works a pebble out of her gardening tiller, which also serves as a crutch. How have you been holding up? I learned some stuff in school, yeah, yeah. 
I'm glad to hear that, your mom says. I want you to study hard, work hard, and stay out of trouble. Your dad smiles. And Professor Al will give you kudos if you get good grades. You can spend those at the depot once it's open. Oh, that's a currency. You know, says your dad, raising an eyebrow at your mom. I think there are lots of different ways to learn, and school is just one of them. You can learn from working on a hobby or by helping a friend. Your mom shakes her head and sighs, though you can tell she's trying to put on a gentle expression. We both agree that the colony is an experiment, and that means we're going to do things differently than on Earth. You're old enough now to start making your own decisions about your education and future, and if that means you find your own way, we'll accept that. Your dad puts a hand on your shoulder. We'll be proud of you no matter what you do. Try talking to your friends. They may have ideas for how you can spend your time. And come by geoponics, your mom adds. We could use your help. Okay, we can shovel dirt in geoponics. Great.